so I'm going to take a quick look at the Hive Wasp 100C, just arrived. Um, got a few of them in. Uh, on first impression, I was um, not impressed at all with the light. Uh, then I gave a very long-winded email to the guys at Hive, and they responded almost immediately and um, gave me answers to all the questions that I had. So really impressed with their support coming back. Um, so it solved a bunch of things. I had problems with the color temperature, um, it, just the color rendering. It was not very good um, with one small tweak. Uh, the CRI, which they boasted about being really high, now is just where they actually said it was. So um, simply, I'll try and go through this pretty quick just so you can see what it's about and um, that I will be keeping these lights because I like them now. <laughs> uh, so it comes with barn doors, um, your fixture, um, this can kind of come off and on. You can change all these accessories uh, with standard photo accessories so you don't need to spend as much money on them. They're adaptable with the ones that also Aperture makes, so you could use their accessories which are quite affordable. Um, on, it also comes with the lenses, three lenses, um, a medium, a super wide, and a wide. I just drop in, uh, they change the spread pattern of the light. Uh, I added this cable on, which is just a XLR to P-Tap. Um, you can get these by a company called VeriZoom on B&H, um, about 30 bucks US. Uh, I added this adapter plate to hold a battery on here as well. These were made by ICANN, um, they're about 20 bucks US. I just modified the bottom of it so it holds a battery. It's meant for holding an AC adapter, but they work well. Just make sure you don't bump it because they can pop off fairly easily. So if you wanted to reinforce it, you could add some more Velcro to that. Um, right now I have a Anton Bauer, what's that? So it's a 90% Anton Bauer 150 digital uh, battery on here. Um, so let's get into this really quickly. Uh, one switch to turn it on in the back. It takes a second to boot up. I think there's a fan here, probably running whatever operating system it has. Um, so on the back, they have their, what they call shot control. Um, so S for saturation, H for hue, O for output, which is your dimmer, uh, and T is your temperature, your color temperature. So uh, the standard setting that it came with is to go with it at uh, saturation at zero. Um, and if you dial in your, your normal 5600 or, or, uh, or 3200 for daylight and tungsten, um, when I do readings off of those, uh, originally, and they'll probably be making some changes to this as well um, after some discussions. But using the Sekonic, this meter, uh, and some tests with the Canon C300, um, reading the levels off of straight 5600, everything else zeroed out, the dimmer up all the way. Um, I don't know if you can see the readings there or not, but they don't look that promising. The CRI, so this is reading all the colors. Um, the reds are quite low. The CRI reading is not extremely high. Um, but after speaking with them about it, making some adjustments and trial and error, um, which you'll probably get changed in a firmware release because uh, there's USB to change things, I found that to get 5600 Kelvin, I set the temperature to 7600 and I set my saturation to 28. So you can get uh, course adjustments on here and then if you want to do fine adjustments you push the button in and turn it and I can do one to one point increments that way uh, same goes for hue and uh, the Kelvins so with that adjustment being made um, this is where we were I don't know if you can see that again so 85 on the CRI everything is sitting in okay spots high 80s um, R9s at 33 uh, take a new reading off of this and a significant difference. Now my CRI rating is giving me, is that readable there? Uh, 98.7. My R9 is 98, uh, which is really a tough one to get good with LEDs. So it's, it's quite acceptable. It's, it's actually really good. And we compared this with uh, the daylight coming in the window, uh, along with um, this light, uh, the hive coming in, uh, hitting someone's face on the opposite side, and they match perfectly. Any kind of adjustments you wanted to do, so say it was uh, 6,000 uh, outside and it was, and you wanted to match that, you can dial your color temperature on here to get to 6,000 if you need to. 
Uh, generally, I always now run this uh, light with a saturation at 28 and a hue at zero. And that'll give me a clean, a cleaner, better R9 value. Um, so what this actually does is your saturation. So my hue is at zero, which on this light, hue being zero is, is red. So if I adjust my saturation to full saturation, you can see everything is bright red. Um, but by having it at the value that I found that works so well at 28, it adds red to the light and doesn't really affect the other colors too much. It actually makes them better. Uh, so that's one setting for that. And then also, so my daylight setting, which is to get 5600, I rated it at uh, 7600 Kelvin with saturation at 28. And then I found to get a good color temperature for tungsten, I'll dial it down to 3600, not 32. That actually gives me a proper... I'll show you the CRI on this one now as well, just so you see it. Uh, with 3600 saturation at 28, uh, I got 98 CRI. Get a little closer. And uh, I don't know if the numbers will show up on YouTube or wherever this is going to land, but everything is quite high all the way around, quite acceptable. Um, and if I did the same reading with it in saturation at zero, it wouldn't be nearly as, as good. <laughs> can show you that quickly. Still not, not that bad, but you can see it drops the red channels down quite a bit. It's coming in. Now if you can see the R9's it's at 74.7 .7 right now. So it's always better with uh, the saturation turned up. I found it 28. Um, so beyond that, Quick showing of what 3600 at 28 with the Calvin's. So now I'm reading uh, 3215 for Calvin's, even though it's reading 3600 on there. It's it's a better spot, and you can also see if I dial it to 76. Take a reading. 7600 Kelvin at 28 saturation gives me uh, 5700 Kelvin roughly, which is where I kind of want to sit close enough to 56, close enough for what I'm doing right now. Um, that's a rough on the color for the light, which I was happy with. Uh, so the way the dimmer or the dials work again, you push or turn, rotate this one to go from dimmer, saturation, hue, color, uh, or, or Kelvin's. And uh, once you're on one of those settings, the right dial dials you to whatever you want it to. If you hold it in, it goes in smaller increments. Again, pretty simple, straightforward. Um, and the output right now, at full output at 10 feet away. Uh, in five, six, and two thirds, roughly. Uh, falls away. It is a bit of a spotted um, attachment that's on there right now. So here it's giving me about four dead center, five six two thirds. Same over here. Give me around four. Yeah. Uh, and if I switch it into tungsten mode, actually I'll show you also. It gives me if you want to know uh, the candles. Again, this is, sorry, the meter is set to 800 ASA, 24 frames, 180 degree shutter, uh, pretty standard. So, same thing, I'm going to with 80 foot candles, or if you care to know Lux, 840 Lux in the center. 840. And um, so, if we go into my Tungsten mode. Eight hundred lux. Seventy three foot candles. Four and a third out here. Yeah, okay. uh, so I read that again. Five, 
five six and two thirds in tungsten. Over here, and it comes into a four right there. It'll be the same on this side. The four, four and a half. So it's got a good amount of output. Um, not a huge beam spread, but if you wanted more of a spread, you can take it off. It won't be as bright, but it'll cover a wider area without putting a lens on. Um, now, without any attachments at all, it's giving me two, eight and a half, roughly, right down there. So, uh, I don't know if you need to know more about that, but that's the rough idea of it. Um, and if you just want to see the hues I can go through, I don't know what my phone's going to do, but zero, you know, 120, 200, so some blues, 280, magenta, 360 gets me back towards the reds. And uh, with the dimmer, you just dial it back. Um, and then you go in smaller increments. They also have an app uh, that you can do all this on for iOS. The Android one is in development, hasn't been released yet. All the DMX stuff's on there. Um, and the only other thing in the box really is just your power supply. So you could run it off AC, standard. But that's a brief rundown on the WAS 100C. Um, if you want to check it out and see one of them, I've got a few at the studio here at Frame Discreet. You can come take a look, just give us a call and give me a call, send me an email, whatever. Just come on by. That's it.